Hi folks, Will here, and today I want to bring together a couple of topics you probably don't hear referred to in the same breath very often. One, bike packing, and two, 3D printing. Now, if you're familiar with our channel's other content, you might have seen that I got the opportunity to join Eddie and Jay on some bikepacking trips recently. And while they were great fun, due to my relative lack of experience, it was my first time, and absolute lack of gear, I just ran what I had. Uh, there were some aspects that just could have been better. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some of the struggles that I ran into that made me think, I can, I can make this better. Uh, and then we'll go through the design phase, how I came up with the idea, developed it, and then actually printed it, and how it made my, my experience better the next time around. I've never been so happy to be a road bike rider in my life, I think. Now, if you're not familiar with our channel's other content, and you want to see a mostly grown man struggle really badly on a bikepacking adventure, feel free to check it out. But otherwise, let's dive into how I went about planning for my first bikepacking trip. All right, time to plan. Bikepacking. Let's start with the bike. Let's go with something lightweight, touring oriented. We're gonna be on the flatlands. Perfect. This was exactly what I had in mind. Can't see how this could go wrong. Like packing, we need some sort of pack. We're gonna have to have something to carry things in. And there we go, we've got a pack. Also needing somewhere to sleep. Boom, anything to sleep in? Sleeping bag, excellent. Straps, let's go. Tomorrow morning, bike packing trip. And with that in mind, you can imagine I had some room for improvement. And really, all in all, I did okay. The main thing was the way that my tent and sleeping bag attached had no rigidity. They were just flopping around up there. Now, that was admittedly a little dramatic, but after a couple of five plus hour riding days, you can imagine that got a little old. This is the worst part of my life. So as I was riding along, I started coming up with some ideas that maybe I could take to plastic later on. And let's maybe take a look at how I design it from there. So this was admittedly designed in advance. I'm not good enough to do almost anything real time and especially not CAD work. No one wants to watch six hours of me being mediocre and an application telling me repeatedly that I need to do better. That said, this 2D design that you have in front of you is effectively what I came up with in my head while riding along on that first bikepacking trip. Now, you'll see I've got three main measurements that were important to me. One, the diameter of the bars. This is, this is critical because if it doesn't do right, it won't mount up well at all and it won't have the strength to hold tight through all the riding. Two, roughly the size, diameter, or in this case, the radius of the sleeping bag, and then likewise for the tent. Now, I just wanted something simple, a small semicircle plastic structure that holds it from flopping around forward and aft. And our next step in the design phase is giving it three dimensions. And we do this through what's called an extrusion. And you can see here now, we've got an actual part. Now, obviously nothing that we'd wanna take and put right on our bike, but from here we can start to build in those other little features that make it a usable part. First things first, because we're fancy people, we put in our fillets and our chamfers. Fillets, obviously those, those nice, pretty rounded ends that you see there. And chamfers are the bevels that you see on the side. Now from there, obviously we still can't mount it up because it doesn't look like we've got any way to fasten it. And you'll see that we just went through sketching and putting in a couple of holes. And now this is going to allow us to put our fasteners through, hopefully tighten it down and everything hold up. And, and it actually did. Now, again, because we're fancy, we do have to go through the process of putting a Simply Mountain Biking logo on it. And you'll recognize at this point, this actually looks like something. Next step is slicing. So the next application we're gonna use is the slicer. And effectively does what it sounds like. It takes a 3D model and it cuts it up into a bunch of little slices that our 3D printer will be able to make for us. Now, there are a lot of settings here around layer height, wall thickness, speed, infill design, things like that, that I've, I've learned over time work well for making a nice, strong piece. 
Now, we can get in here close and see what this printer is actually going to be doing and what these layers will look like. And as you see, the low layers are actually going to just be almost solid. They're going to be packed really closely together. You're going to have no voids. Now, you don't necessarily need that throughout a piece. And as we move up the layers, and I'm slowly stepping up through, you see now we start to get a pattern. And what that's called is the infill. And now that, that infill is going to allow us to save plastic, save weight, and, and hopefully keep the same strength of part throughout. Now, as you step up through, you'll see we get thicker and thicker, and now all of a sudden you see our fastener. So it's gonna start putting walls in, some solid component around where that fastener is gonna come through. So we don't just strip out, because you can imagine if the screw were to go simply through that hollow section, you wouldn't have much grip at all. And then as it comes to the top, it simply draws a top over it, and you have our nice SMB logo, because of course, we're fancy people. And here, you simply save it to file, and then we'll take it over to the 3D printer next. What you're seeing here is greatly sped up, but this is the first layer, critically important. It adheres the part to the print bed, and if it goes wrong, well, it knocks a skew, molten plastic everywhere. Big ugly situation. Um, this is PETG, which is the same thing that plastic water bottles are made of, and it likes to print at about 455 degrees coming out of the nozzle, and it likes a print bed, or that, that textured glass surface that it's on, to be at around 185 degrees. You can see the texture of the infill, where we get those cross hatchings and air voids inside of it, and notice that it takes about four hours in total to print it between start to being ready to bolt onto the bike. So you might be asking, did it work? And, and the answer is yes. I bolted it on the bike and took it for the next segment of our Palmetto Trail and Swamp Rabbit Trail ride, which included a lot of skinnies with drops and chunky roots, and, and it did great. It held everything in place, and, and I almost couldn't have been happier with it. Now, if you're gonna ask, do I have any sweet footage showing an A-B comparison before and after, I, I don't, so maybe this is where you folks can come in and help out and uh, provide some comments with some ideas on how to test this. So maybe take it out for some downhill action or load it with bricks and see when it fails or something like that. But um, anyways, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, any questions, feel free to throw them down below. And uh, otherwise, oh, I don't have a tagline. Hmm. Uh, I'll sign off with a get out there and ride, but do better than will. I don't know. Anyways, take care.